Welcome to Librarian Recommends. Hi, my name is Trish and I'm one of the librarians at Barbican Library. And whilst the library is closed, I'm going to bring you some suggestions of books to read or listen to via a Librarian Recommends session each week on a Thursday. Whilst you're unable to come into the library to collect books, you can download ebooks and audiobooks using our free RB Digital app. If you need help using the app, please look in our video section on the left of this Facebook page or go to our YouTube channel. Just type Barbican and Community Libraries into the YouTube search box and select the top search result and you will see the help video there. Today I am going to concentrate on modern fiction. Firstly, I'm going to mention some ebook titles you might be interested in trying. Let's kick off with The Shock of the Fall by Nathan Filer. Filer is a qualified psychiatric nurse and mental health researcher, and in this debut, he explores mental illness, loss and grief through the eyes of Matthew, who is trying to come to terms with the death of his brother when they were children. This is a poignant and touching portrait that won two Costa Book Awards. Next up is Pigeon English by Stephen Kelman. This is a sad and funny coming-of-age tale told through the eyes of Pigeon English of the 11-year-old Harrison. Harry has recently emigrated from Ghana to a tough council estate in the UK. A boy he vaguely knows is murdered outside the tower block where he lives and Harry teams up with CSI fan and friend Dean to solve the murder. This really is a compelling and touching story. How about Pure Juliet by Stella Gibbons? This novel only saw the light of day 25 years after the author's death. It's set in the late 1970s and tells the story of 17-year-old Juliet Slater. She's not your typical teenager. She lacks social skills and empathy and is only interested in maths and science. But after achieving outstanding A-level results, her father forbids her from going to university and she runs away. So do have a read to find out what happens to Juliet. This really is a quirky tale about an eccentric girl, a recovered gem from the author of Cold Comfort Farm. A couple of others you might be interested in are The A to Z of Everything by Debbie Johnson, which is a heartwarming read to lift your heart in these troubled times. It revolves around estranged sisters, Poppy and Rose, and their mother, Andrea, who puts together an A to Z list of tasks the sisters must complete together before she dies. It's a story about family ties, forgiveness, and most importantly, love. Finally, how about Lazy Days by Earl and Lowe? Lowe is a Norwegian novelist, and this is a darkly comic tale of Bra, a director of the Norwegian National Theatre who's holidaying in Bavaria. His wife has a love of all things German, but he definitely does not. He just wants to dream about his obsession with Nigella Lawson. This is a great pick if you fancy a quick and quirky read. And now on to some audiobooks. If you've not tried listening to books before, why not give it a try? There really is something relaxing and soothing about being read to, regardless of the genre. The first suggestion is The Book That Matters Most by Anne Hood. In this novel, Ava Tucker finds herself alone and lonely after her divorce. Ava's librarian friend encourages her to join the book group. Ava makes friends and we hear about the different members' book choices and the impact the book had on them. This is a novel about love, lost, loss, secrets, redemption, and the power of books and libraries. What a great story. Next up is Tiny Sunbirds Far Away by Christy Watson. The novel's narrator is Blessing, a happy 12-year-old living in Lagos, but that changes when her parents divorce and her mother is fired from her job. So Blessing, her mother and brother, are forced to move in with her grandparents in a rural village and we follow them, setting up a new and very different life to the one they've left. It is a deeply moving portrait of family survival entwined with Blessing's coming of age. How about The Love Letter by Lucinda Riley? It begins with the death of highly acclaimed nonagenarian actor Sir James Harrison, who leaves behind a grieving family and mourning fans. But there is a letter that many have tried to conceal. But ambitious journalist Joanna Haslam is on the case and is de determined to unlock the letter's shocking secrets. This novel is packed with secrets, intrigue, scandal, romance, treachery, murder and espionage, which is probably quite enough to be going on with. A couple of others for you are An American Marriage 
by Tayari Jones. This is a haunting and moving story of a miscarriage of justice, incarceration and the emo emotional repercussions revolving around Celeste and Rory, who are living the American dream, or so they think. But it takes a shocking turn when Rory is convicted of murder. A beautifully written novel about friendship, racism, flawed relationships and the ramifications of the choices we make. My last suggestion is a modern gothic fantasy called In the Night Wood by Dale Bailey, centred around failed academic Charles Hayden and his obsession with a Victorian children's book called In the Night Wood, as Charles's wife Erin is a distant relative of the book's author. Erin inherits the author's home, Hollow House, and the couple move from America to the remote Yorkshire residence to start a new life. It turns out that Hollow House is a place of dark secrets, visions and bad dreams, which sounds like a very spooky and intriguing combination. I do hope you enjoy these ideas for your next read. They might be books you wouldn't have considered before, but why not try something new? You might be surprised. And don't forget, if these titles I have suggested are unavailable when you look, you can search by genre and availability in the RB Digital app for other ideas. Do use the comments section below to add your own suggestions of modern fiction books you think our customers might enjoy. And if we don't already have them available in our RB Digital collection, we will see if we can add them. Before I go, as always, I would like to thank my colleague Lynn for her invaluable help putting these recommendations together. Do stay safe and well, and we'll see you next week. Bye.